Hello and welcome to your accounting class. This is financial accounting and this is the first chapter and I'm going to walk you through it. So I wanted to welcome you to class and give you this introduction. <clears throat> so first things first, that's not the first thing. So first things first is I want you to join Remind. Remind is just a texting app so that you and I can text each other and we don't have to exchange phone numbers, but it is much uh, quicker response time if you go ahead and text me as opposed to sending me an email. I will still answer emails, it just takes me a little bit longer to get to it, and you can usually get your questions answered fairly quickly if you just shoot me a text. So you're gonna text me, I left this at blah blah, because I posted that information on our, um, either our Canvas or Blackboard site, and uh, so anyway, but you'll text whatever class we're in to the number 81010. I've also given you a link to that, so it should be fairly easy. Um, and it's lots of fun to text me, let me tell you. It takes care of a lot of waiting. All right, and then I want you to check out our course site. So in there, I've got an introduction, your syllabus, your calendar, how to communicate with me, and all of the weekly modules. We will be using Connect for this class, so uh, hopefully you've heard of Connect, use Connect, and if not, you're going to learn to love Connect. Okay, and moving right along, I thought it might be kind of fun for you to see a little bit about who I am. So uh, this is me, uh, and I'm actually, well, this is me over here with my two kids, and we're in front of the Arc de Triomphe in uh, Barcelona, and here's my younger son in Croatia. He's catching a fish right off of Dubrovnik. This is my dog, Ali, and my two cats, Bella and Stella, or Stella and Bella, I'm, I can't really tell them apart. And uh, I either am boxing or this was a CrossFit competition I was in over just this weekend. So, all right, so how are you gonna become successful in this class? Well, the first thing that I want you to do is keep your book handy and read it. Now, you don't have to necessarily do this in order. You could certainly use your book as kind of a, uh, a reference point, if you will. Um, I am posting PowerPoints for each of the chapters, and there are also PowerPoints that are narrated um, in uh, uh, in Connect. So either one, but you do have lots of homework, and I've made sure that the homework is um, comprehensive to make sure that it covers all of your learning objectives, but um, it also is going to prepare you nicely for your exams. All right, so there are lots of Connect resources. Uh, the ebook actually has some nice little quiz questions, kind of like speed bumps along the road to make sure that you're understanding things as you're going along. Um, and there's, a, there's hints within the homework and that kind of thing. Um, you'll also take the quizzes. There's one attempt. If you've done the homework, you should have no problem doing the quiz. Just make sure and do your own. And then every three chapters, we're going to have an exam. And I've also set up practice questions for the exam. So this class is a lot of work, but I have set it up for you to succeed. Okay, um, another couple ideas here, maybe form a study group. I know this is an online class, but um, I can help put you in touch with your classmates if you so choose. Um, you guys can also text me and just express an interest and I'll try to see if I can help you formulate those. And lastly, but really importantly, is now that you're able to text me, please, please, please reach out to me if you're stuck or stumped or confused or you need clarification or whatever, but I have to really rely on you to reach out to me when you're stuck because I won't be able to know unless you kind of nudge me. All right, so let's get into this. What are some of the biggest challenges that companies face today? So I brought up the website and you also have a link to it, but um, one of the biggest challenges that companies have today is um, that uh, the CEOs are great idea people, they're good at big pictures, at thinking outside the box, but they're less good at things like cash flow and profit margins. How do I reduce my costs? Where's my money coming from? And that kind of thing, as well as monitoring their performance. So a company may set out a budget and say, this is, I think, how much money I'm going to make, and this is how much it's gonna cost me to make that money. But sometimes they don't circle back and find out if their budget was actually the right thing. So that's managerial accounting, which we're gonna get into in 116B, not this semester, but we are gonna learn how to measure things so that 
it sounds really straightforward, but once we write things down, then it's easier to track things and easier to make decisions. So another thing I ask is what are some of the smaller businesses facing? What are some of their biggest things? So again, number two on the list is money management. How do they have enough cash to cover their bills? How do they know where the cash is coming from, right? How do you know if somebody still owes you money? So, um, you know, how do we know if we have enough to keep the company going? So um, there's capitalization things, there's cash reserves that we have to worry about. So I wanted to bring these things up. Why? Well, because I want you to know that what you're going to be studying is actually very relevant to today's world. And even though you may not be an accountant, um, and especially if you're going to go off and start your own business, learning how to keep track of your finances is going to be the key to your success. Said another way, those companies that fail are likely the ones that have lost the ability to really pay attention to their bottom line. Okay, now I don't expect you to read this article, but I thought it would be interesting for an immediate... Now this one's a couple, wow, it's a couple years old. Well, year and a half old by now. But anyway, so this is back when Tesla was making a bunch of hoo-ha out in the news and they announced that they were going to issue $1.5 billion in debt securities to bring the Model 3 sedan to customers, which, well, I think they, I think they're out on the road now. Okay, so Elon Musk um, was mentioning that Tesla, the company, was considering debt rather than equity to finance themselves. So they had $7 billion in long-term debt, outstanding, accounts payable and accrued liabilities, whoa, 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 sorry, exceeded $3.8 billion. Tesla could raise $1.5 billion by increasing its total shares outstanding by less than 3%. Now, I know that you are lost. I know that you probably stopped listening to me about halfway through, but what I wanted to show you is this is just an article that was written in the Wall Street Journal, and although it sounds like garbly goop right now, guess what? By the end of this class, I should actually save this slide and put it in on our 12th chapter. By the time you get to the 12th chapter, you will be able to read this article again, and it will make complete sense to you. Okay, how do you like that? All right, and here on the next slide is another one. This one's about Amazon. This one's a little more current. And um, it talks about market share. It talks about watching costs rise faster than revenue, putting the pressure on the bottom line. They're talking about surges of operating earnings and they're generating revenue. So you're gonna be able to understand this article as well. All right, so what's the objective of this whole class, this whole financial accounting, okay? By the time we're done with this class, we will learn how to capture and calculate all of the information that is relevant to investors and creditors to help them make decisions. What are they making decisions about? They're making decisions on whether they want to lend to a company. They're making the credit, the investors are making decisions on whether they want to loan or whether they want to invest in the company. Like Warren Buffett, he does nothing but sit around and study income statements and makes decisions on whether he wants to go in and, um, and buy in out a company, okay? Um, also, what we're going to be doing is putting together numbers that will help us predict the cash flows of a company. Now, that's awfully important. Why is that important? Because if you don't know where your cash is coming from, then it's really hard to manage your business, all right? Um, the information we're also gonna put together tells us about economic resources, claims to those resources, something like if you're driving a car and you have a car loan outstanding, well, there's a claim to that resource. So the resource would be your car, the claim would be the loan that you have against that car, all right? So those are things that we're going to talk about. So the framework is that there's accountants that put this information together and they communicate it to investors and creditors. Investors and creditors make um, decisions about the company. The company is measured by those financial uh, data points put together by the accountants and it's a big circle. So this is where it all fits together. Now, there's a lot of things I have to say about accountants, um, and I'm gonna save some of that for later, but they are not a bunch of pencil pushers that wear wire rim glasses and wear pocket protectors, even though I have one, but I've never used it. Um, and they're actually, there are a lot 
a lot of jobs in the world of accounting that are less geeky than what you may be picturing in your mind. All right, so here are the people and they're gonna be making decisions about a company. Well, what kind of decisions? Well, like I started to mention to you, investors are gonna decide whether to invest in the, in the um, stock market for that company. Creditors are gonna decide whether they wanna lend the company money. Customers might decide whether they wanna purchase the product or not. Let's say there's a company like, um, I think Sears might be going out of business. Do you really wanna buy a Kenmore washer? right supplies so a supplier may decide if they want to extend credit to the company um, or whether they should pay cash for the supplies managers are deciding on whether they should produce more of something or another expand maybe contract employees are going to decide about the health of a company and whether they want to work there competitors are going to decide on whether they uh, want to enter the same market whether they maybe can do better regulators decide on the social welfare of the company and so on and so forth. So you get the idea, but all of this information that we'll be putting together this semester is what is relied on by the external world, meaning not the companies, the people within the company, but the people external to the company. Okay, so we talked about this and all this slide basically says is that everybody that is publishing financial information, which means if a company is publicly traded, they must follow the same rule book. Kind of like football, if you're a football fan, or even if you're not and you know what football is, everybody knows that, um, you know, there's a kickoff and that um, it's two points for a, or it's, it's six points for, <laughs> for a touchdown and there's an extra point if you go for that and that's two points, you know, but we're all playing by the same rules. A tackle is a tackle. If you catch it out of bounds, then it doesn't count. You know, those kinds of things. We're all playing by the same rules. Well, accounting is no different. I know that's kind of a loose description of football. For those huge football fans out there, I apologize. All right, so in the United States, we are bound by the rules that are created by the FASB. We call that FASB, Financial Standards Board, okay? Governed by the SEC. And globally, if you're a global company, then you, you are um, bound by the International Standards Board. So that's just a little bit different if it's international. All right, so the, rule, the rules of the auditors is basically like the referees. It makes sure that everybody is playing by the same rules. Okay, so there are assumptions that underlie the gap. So in other words, we're talking about an, an economic entity, da 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 da, they're going concern. I'm not gonna spend too much time on these, but um, these are the underlying assumptions. Okay, there's a slight difference between financial accounting and managerial accounting. Managerial accounting is next semester, uh, yeah, next semester or another semester down the road, and um, it, it, the information that is put together is used by those people inside the company, whereas financial accounting, those statements are created and provided to the outside world, okay? And that's the focus of our, uh, that's the focus of this class. Okay. So there are a lot of career opportunities, but I am not gonna spend any time on this, but there are a ton of them. And also in Blackboard, I have posted some really neat little web links that you can go into under this um, plank. Now, if you're in at Palomar, you're gonna be looking at this in, Can in Canvas, so it's a little bit different, so don't freak out. But there's a title called You and Your Future, and there's all these things, and you can just go through there in your own free time. If you're at all on the fence about what you wanna be when you grow up or what your major's gonna be, maybe you need a little direction, why not take these? And they're not necessarily about accounting, but you can see that there are so many opportunities out there that you may not know about. All right, so there are many different types of business entities. This may not be a surprise to you, but there are sole proprietorships. That's maybe an entrepreneur that just starts his or her own company. There might be a partnership where a couple people go in together and start a company. And there's a corporation, which is its own entity. 
it's out it does have a CEO but the CEO is not that company it would be like having Julie's barbecue food truck right that's my own private sole proprietorship if I went in with Joe then it would be Joe and Julie's barbecue food truck right but if I were to become a corporation it would just be the barbecue food truck for example and someone else could step in and, as CEO and I am not the same entity as the food truck so it's a separate legal entity Okay, moving right along, I wanted to uh, next introduce you to the major four statements, components that we're going to be working with uh, throughout the rest of this semester. So there are four basic financial statements in financial accounting, and each of those statements tells a little bit different story, and they never repeat the same story, they just tell it from a slightly different angle. Why do you have to do that? Well, because there are different pieces of information that you want to convey depending on uh, what the question is that's uh, being asked or what kind of information you want to be um, conveying to the, to the outside world. So one of them is the income statement. There's a statement of stockholders equity, a balance sheet, and a statement of cash flows. And the coolest thing is that they're all interrelated. So there's a piece of the statement of cash flows that feeds into the balance sheet. There's a piece of the stockholders equity that also feeds in the balance sheet. There's a piece of the income statement that folds into the statement of stockholders equity that feeds into the balance sheet. So they're all linked together, but they tell a little bit different story. So let's think about the resources and the claims to the resources um, in a company. So investors and creditors want to know about where the company, what resources they have, and where the claims are to those resources. So resources of a company we also refer to as an asset. I think we've probably heard that word before. It's like a good thing. It's something that we own. And that is what we put on one side of the equation. You can see there's an equal sign and a plus sign over here. So this is truly an equation. So if you think about it, I have a car, that's my asset. All right, on the other side of the equation basically answers the question, where the heck did that asset come from? Okay, are there claims to creditors for those assets? Did I borrow money for a car? Or is it simply a claim that the owner has against that resource? So the stockholders equity are basically the owners of the company, which are usually the stockholders, and they own that resource. So it kind of makes sense. It's like if you look at something, let's say I look at my car and I go, well, does the bank own it or do I own it? And there is the car. So this is why this equation is so neat because it tells me what my asset is and who owns it. Okay, so there's that relationship, and we call this the basic accounting equation. Now there's an expanded accounting equation that's coming up, but don't worry about it now. As long as you got this part, we're good. So there's a summary. All right, and those things went on the balance sheet. I'm pretty sure I told you that. Balance sheet right there. Okay, so then the next statement that we're going to talk about is the income statement. If you want to pause this for a minute because you're getting tired of hearing me talk, that's all right. You can go to brief exercise 1-5 and kind of give yourself a little test and see if you've actually been following along and you're starting to get it. So there are revenues and expenses and dividends that are all affecting the income statement. So the income statement basically is recording the net profit of the company. Now this doesn't necessarily mean how much cash I had, but let's say I'm a company and, a, and the company is uh, Julie's Coffee Cart, for example, right? We can all kind of relate to that. So I am making what's called revenue, otherwise known as sales, by doing what I do best, making coffee and serving it to people and maybe some donuts or some muffins. Well, maybe some scones. I like scones. All right, and then we have expenses. So what are the expenses that go along with selling or operating my coffee cart? Well, can you think of some? I can think of some. How about the coffee cup that the coffee gets sold in? What about the coffee itself? What about the scones that I bought from the local bakery or the stir sticks? 
maybe the barista's salary. Those are all expenses. Those are all things that I had to spend money for so that I could earn that revenue. So that's what we call an expense. So I have revenue, the things that I do to sell either my product or service, and the expense is whatever it took me to make that revenue. Okay, the dividends are what wind up being distributed as profits to my stockholders. So here is an overview, although this slide comes one too soon for me because I keep forgetting to move it. But anyway, there's <laughs> the balance sheet, which we talked about, the income statement, which are their revenue expenses, the stockholders equity, which summarizes the equity over a period of time. And then there's the statement of cash flows. And all the statement of cash flows does is shows us where cash came into the company, in what form, not like green versus red, but like where did the money come from? Did it come from me selling my coffee or did it come from me uh, getting cashed out from a loan or did I borrow money from the bank? You know, those are examples. Okay, so let's turn to this and we'll see if maybe we have our account classifications right. So if I, for example, received cash from a customer, what accounts are affected? Let's think about this. So if I receive cash, well, for sure cash came in. So cash is one of the accounts and it's an asset, right? Because it's something that I own. The cash from a customer, and the part it didn't tell you is because they bought a cup of coffee. So now <laughs> we're going to assume that we need some revenue. So this is kind of tough if you haven't really had a lot of exposure to it, but there's no points involved. So you can just kind of see it's like purchasing equipment. Hmm. Well, if I paid cash for it, then my assets would be affected because my cash would go down. And then I bought a piece of equipment. Oop, and equipment is an asset. And so my assets are going to go up. All right, so just give that a whirl and see and how you do. All right, so the statement of cash flows again, those are the methods or the types of activities that occurred that either brought cash in or where cash went out. So I'll start at the bottom. The operating activity is the transactions that are that um, where cash comes in and come or goes out as the result of the primary operations of the company. So if we're Julie's coffee cart, what's our primary operation? It's selling coffee, right? So if money comes in for me selling the coffee, that's an operating activity. If I pay the salaries for my barista, that's because I'm a coffee cart and that's what I do best. So that's an operating activity. All right, what about an investing activity? This is the purchase and sale of resources that are going to expectedly benefit the company for several years. For example, if I buy a coffee cart itself, that's gonna last me for a long time, right? So with the rest, for with all these resources in place, maybe I got a big sign, then the company is, be, is ready to begin their operation. So all of these things that I purchase as an investment in the company, those are considered investing activities. So if I paid $10,000 cash, right, then I need to know where'd that $10,000 go? Well, I can say with all the certainty, I spent $10,000 as an investment in the company by buying a, company, a coffee cart, okay? Financing activities are those transactions that the company has with investors and creditors, like issuing stock to stockholders and borrowing money from the local bank. So those are the ways that Julie's Coffee Cart finances itself. Where do I get that money? Okay, so here's some, just some activities for you to kind of see. It's like, oh, well, is this a financing, operating, or investing? So paying utility costs, what do you think that one is? If you said operating, you're right. Okay, so I've given you just some examples here of wow, this is what an income statement like might look like. Here's the revenue that I'm making. Here are all my various expenses. There's the total expenses. And here's my net income. I hope that's positive. I hope, hope I've made more revenue than I've spent in expenses. But sometimes that's not always true. And that's where life gets a little scary. Okay, here's a statement of stockholders' equity. This basically shows me the position of 
Did anybody invest in my company? Well, if it's a brand new company, then nobody has. But oh, all of a sudden, $25,000 comes in by me issuing stock and people investing in my, in my stock market. So there's $25,000. Retained earnings is just those earnings that I have retained. It's net income that I made over the years. So remember how we made $1,200? But then if we paid $200 of dividends out, then really we only have $1,000 left. And then we just total that up. Here's the stock, here's the net income, there's the dividends I paid out, so that's my ending balance right there. Alrighty, and that means, okay, if you remember that $26,000, woohoo, look at that. Here is the balance sheet of the company. It's kind of the grand finale, all right? Here's the $25,000 where people invested in me, Here's my retained earnings from the statement of retained earnings. There's my total stockholders equity. And then these are all my liabilities. These numbers were just given to me. I just want to give you a general kind of overview of how all this, this uh, looks in a statement. Okay, so there are links amongst the financial statements that the, the um, amount from the income statement goes into retained earnings, then that that um, goes into the total stockholders equity which shows up boom on the balance sheet and then we have cash flows both in and out and the cash at the end of the year ties back to the balance of the cash on the balance sheet so it's all a nice pretty picture after it's all over and believe it or not you are going to be able to put all of this together by the end of the semester that's my goal Okay, so I've just given you some um, really quick little kind of test it yourself sorts of things. So Eagle Company orders, uh, they, have a, they have clinics and yada yada. So if they have assets of $50,000 and liabilities of $27,000 and dividends and revenues expenses, let's calculate the net income. Well, we have to know what net income is comprised of and then we have to know where the assets and the liabilities and everything else is. Oh my gosh. But don't you worry because guess what? On the next slide, I've kind of broken that down for you. So you can kind of go back and forth here. There's revenues of 14 and expenses of 9. Here's revenue of 14, expenses of 9. So there's my net income. Here's my stockholder's equity, and I kind of break all that down for you. So I want you to spend a little bit of time and kind of go through that and see if you can figure that part out. Okay, and here I've given you just a small little quiz in case you're interested in testing your knowledge. I've given you some information over here, and I said the company had common stock of $29,000, da 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 and you can prepare an income statement and then prepare a stockholders equity section of the balance sheet and then prepare the balance sheet itself based on this information here. But if you get confused, I've given you the answer over here. So kind of go back and forth, go back through my slides, see if you can all make sense of it. This is the tough part about an online class is you kind of have to reverse engineer yourself into this thinking, but I've given you some examples to see if you can do it. Okay, and then I've left you with some concept checks with the answers so that you can test your knowledge. And that is chapter one. So congratulations, and I'll see you in chapter two. So don't forget to do your homework.